Let's take a look at creating these abstract line waves in Illustrator and Photoshop. Tip -tot. Hello everybody and welcome back to Tip Tart and welcome to another tutorial. Today we're going to be taking a look at creating these abstract line waves in Illustrator and adding some nice blurring and glow effects inside of Photoshop. Without any further ado, let's jump right in. First thing we're going to do is uh, set up our pencil tool for this uh, tutorial. If you hover over your shaper tool and long press, you'll get the pencil tool. There's also the shortcut for N as well. And if you um, want to change the properties of this, you can do so from the properties panel up here, click tool options and for this tutorial you're going to want your fidelity to be all the way up to smooth and what this does is if I draw a janky line it's going to do its best to smooth out those points if I were to go back to my uh, tool options here and drag this fidelity all the way down and I did a similarly janky line it's going to do its best to respect the jankiness of that line that I have created for this series we would like it to be incredibly smooth. Keep it selected is also a useful thing here because we're going to be um, selecting them automatically. Closing paths, not going to be affecting us for this tutorial. So what we're going to be doing is using the blend tool to um, make this technique work. I'm just going to draw myself some large sweeping lines that go generally wide at the top left and bring themselves closer together towards the right hand corner here. I'm making sure that no matter what lines I do, they extend past the end of my artboard. And I'm making sure also that there's a general trend towards this downward motion towards the right. Essentially, the general shape we're going to be going for is that of a triangle, which indicates direction, of course, um, and uh, motion and speed. So you can see there's this general triangle shape. If I just highlight that in red so you guys can see a little bit easier what we're going for there. So general downwards and rightwards direction with our lines here. Now we need to do a little bit of setup on the blend tool as well. So I'm going to go to my object, blend, blend options. We want to make sure that the spacing is set to specified steps. And what this is basically going to do is going to take one of our lines and a second one of our lines, and it's going to generate um, reactively, automatically, the steps between those two shapes. If you wanted it to be smooth, you would choose smooth color. And if you had to say like a red circle and a green circle, it would blend uh, a number of steps required to be completely smooth between red and green. What we want is a specified number of steps. I found for this canvas, which is just 1920 by 1080, 32 seems to work. So I'm just going to hit OK on that. Now I'm just going to select all of my elements here and go to Object, Blend, Make. The shortcut is also Alt Control B. Now that you can see is going to blend all of our lines together uh, and create these um, sort of in between segments. The beauty about doing it with the blend tool is, as you can see when you hover, it only actually still creates the first and last line of each blend. These ones in the middle you can't select. What that does mean is if you adjust a point, it's going to adjust your entire blend. So I'm going to adjust this until I'm happy with it. Just by tweaking a few points here, creating a bit more contrast and interest. Till I get something that I'm happier with. I don't like, for example, this thick chunk at the end here. So what I might do is just select this point and start curving it upwards a little bit. If there's any bits that you don't want, you can obviously blend this one at a time. So for example, if I was to take my pencil tool like this, I could blend these two options, Alt Control B, and say, yeah, okay, I'm happy with that. Let's add another set of options up here. Select, uh, oh, excuse me, I actually deleted that first one. Select those new lines, Alt Control B and build it up slowly that way. You do get different results, more control, obviously, as you can see here. But uh, for me, I'm just happy with this, this segment here that we've got. A um, little bit more tweaking. I want a bit more contrast over this segment. So I'm just going to pull one of these lines so it overlaps a little bit more. Let's see if I can do something better with this path as well. I quite like that hard corner curve there. And if we were to select this individual point and bring it back down. We might get a bit more of a contrasting shape there. Okay, that looks pretty good, happy with that. Now you have two options here. I'm going to do my gradient inside Illustrator because I prefer the way that works. So I'm just gonna go up to my window tool and choose gradient. And then I'm just gonna choose one of these random ones just to get us started. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that it's set to the stroke and not the fill. And then it's just a case of going through and choosing the gradient that you want. 
I'm going to do the classic sort of through the color spectrum gradient here, going from red through to yellow and then yellow through to green. That green's quite nice. Green through to blue. Let's choose a bit more of a bolder blue and blue through to purple like that. I'm going to give my blue a little bit less space because it's a stronger color. And of course, shift my red to yellow through because it's a bit more of a gradual change. And just basically tweak until you're happy with the results that you get. I'm pretty happy with that. So it's time to take this into Photoshop. So in Photoshop, I've got the same a 1920 by 1080 canvas. I've just copied it. I'm going to paste this as a smart object and just hit OK. It might take a second for you to render these pixels after you place it. So I like to make sure I get the positioning right before we even think about placing this. I'm just going to make sure it goes vaguely from the top left down to the bottom right and that all the ends of my lines, or excuse me, all the ends of my lines here are indeed hidden and covered. Let's go to about there, that looks pretty good. And then obviously once you place it, it might take a second to actually place that for you. Fantastic. Once it's been placed, you can see that we're pretty much set. Uh, all I'm going to do is add a nice background here. Um, let's get rid of the stroke and let's have a gradient fill. Uh, let's start off with just the basic one for now and then we can tweak that. So I'm going to hit control open square bracket to push that below our um, strokes here. And we're just going to go and tweak through our gradient. I'm going to choose a nice dark blue that's almost black. And then for this end, a nice dark red that's almost black. And then in the middle, we're just going to go for like a gradient red in the middle too. Maybe slightly lighter. There we go. That just adds a nice little bit of a glow to the background there. Okay, next step, if you want to, you can add a kind of um, drop shadow or outer glow to this. Obviously, if you make the drop shadow light, you could get some nice effects. Makes it look like your lines are ever so slightly glowing. If we give that a 1% spread and a slightly smaller glow there, something nice and subtle. Perfect. I'm going to duplicate this now and I'm going to hide my first layer. Then we're going to go to filters, blur, oh sorry, uh, blur gallery, tilt shift. Now when this tilt shift comes in, you're going to want the first thing to do is drag the point of this tilt shift down to the bottom right and arrange the angle up to the top left. Then stretch out your blur starting point and blur finishing point to the sections that you would like. I'm just going to add in a little bit more of a blur there. And then obviously you can affect things like the blur strength and how much is going to distort that as well. I want that to be quite strong. Uh, and I think I'm pretty happy with that. Um, it's actually a bit too strong. Let's take that distortion back to zero and the blur strength down just a little bit. Don't want the path blur on. Yeah, that looks much better. Happy with that. So we've got our focal point down here. Um, and then just hit OK, and it's going to render out those changes for you. That adds a nice little level of three dimensions to this. Apart from that, that's pretty much it. Of course, if you wanted to, you can make this glow and stuff like that as well, um, using some drop shadows or outer glow effects. But I quite like the way it looks like this. One thing I always like to do as well is to add a nice dark border around the edge. Maybe set that to color burn. Sorry, I'm an idiot. Color burn. There it is. <laughs> and create yourselves a nice border for your artwork there. Well, that's all for today. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. A nice, quick and easy one for you. This is a really versatile effect that you can use in a lot of different situations. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell, all of that nonsense. And I'll see you next time for another episode of Tip Tap. for more tips, tricks, and tutorials. Thanks for watching.